The Apple Watch Series 7 is the most complete Apple Watch available in the market. As it's fully loaded, it shares every single feature available, like the automatic hand washing detection, it'll start its 20 second timer and congratulate you once you complete washing your hands. It has fall detection, great for the elderly, built in SOS, which will get a hold of emergency dispatchers, send them to your location, as well as a hold of your emergency contact list. All day battery, which at the end of the day always leaves me close to 10% or more battery life percentage remaining. That's with a heavy day load of me working out and stuff at the gym. It has heart rate sensor, which is what's used to calculate the calorie burns for your workouts. Blood oxygen sensor monitoring as well. It has ECG capabilities, which is not certified or recommended by doctors, but it does collect this data so you can actually prove some type of evidence to your doctors in case you're experiencing something out of the ordinary compared to previous data you at least have that to back it up is able to monitor your heart rate and warn you in case it notice something out of the ordinary as well it has software capabilities to unlock your mac with your apple watch as well as confirm apple pay purchases it could do basically everything so it's 2022 the apple watch series 7 was released last year should you go ahead and pick this up if it's your first Apple Watch or upgrade if you're upgrading from an older Apple Watch. We're going to go ahead and cover all that and more. So the Apple Watch that I personally own right now and use day to day is the Nike Edition 45mm. New this year for the Series 7 is we have a much, well, one millimeter larger display. So if you settle with the smaller Apple Watch, it is now a 43 and the large one like this one is a 45 Mine happened to be the Nike Edition. I picked this out because with the Nike Edition, compared to the standard one, it costs the exact same, but you have exclusive Nike watch face to choose from, as well as an exclusive Nike logo in the back here. And you also get additional band options to choose from. If you look closely, these are more focused for a, a, an athletic user. So these little holes will allow your wrist to stay cooler while you're working out but you lose out on some of the other colors which is used from, like this blue one right here. And here's a side-by-side -side, side -side comparison against the new blue color and the new midnight color. The midnight really does look black, which I really do like. It reminds me a lot like the stainless steel Apple watches that came in black. This is actually real black, especially when you compare it against the older black option for the aluminum body, which is space gray, what we have right here. You can definitely tell this one definitely does look real black, easier match. Now the blue one on the other hand, this is the new uh, blue color choice available for the Series 7. I also own this one, but I don't personally use it because blue is just hard to match. And when you compare it against the Series 6 in that new blue color, it's much darker. The darker color was easier to match with thing. This one's much of a like a baby blue color, if you could tell. But aside from the screen, other exclusive features that the Series 7 has from compared to the older Apple Watches is the Series 7 is the only one with an actual keyboard, so you don't have to verbally talk to your Apple Watch to reply to a text message or use scribbles. You can actually type it in, and it does support Swift. Then, it also charges faster compared to the older Apple Watches, but me personally, I don't really know a dramatic difference in terms of charging rate. So this, to me, wasn't really much of a selling point. And then if I would be completely honest, yes, it's cool that it does have a keyboard, but there was also third party apps you could download on the older Apple Watches, which will give you a keyboard capability as well. So not much of a selling point here. In actuality, the biggest selling point is just a larger display. As the Series 6 also had blood oxygen monitoring sensors. Now mine is the LT version, which is why it has a little red ring on the digital crown and honestly first impressions to give you a little bit of background i did upgrade it from the series 6 to the series 7 and the first thing i have noticed is that larger display definitely does make the watch look more pleasant to view when you're only using the new watch faces these ones that really do utilize the edge display hardware but in actuality this isn't really much of a selling point because when I'm just casually operating my Apple Watch, launching apps and such, or switching it to my favorite watch face, which is the Infograph, it just allows me to have a lot of complications in a, one, in a single watch face. That's the reason why I like this watch face a lot, but it doesn't really allow me to actually utilize the Edge hardware like these other watch faces does. So this is just primarily 
cosmetics. It's not really a awesome feature that really does allow you to use the Apple Watch in a useful way, if that makes sense. But it does carry the same hardware that was found on the Series 6 and even the Series 5, such as always on display. It is much brighter than the Series 5, but from the Series 6 to this Series 7, the brightness on the always on didn't really increase. And it still carries the blood oxygen sensor, which is nice. It has it on the Series 7. It also still continues to have the heart rate sensor as well. Then it has fall detection which was announced on the Series 5, and all the newer Apple Watches have this built into them, including the SE. Other useful ways I utilize this Apple Watch day-to-day -day is it does have internal storage, which does allow me to actually install podcasts, my podcast, onto the Apple Watch, as well as my music playlist, and listen to everything connecting it with AirPods. It does have built-in Bluetooth, so you can actually pair like third-party headphones like Samsung earbuds and such in case you don't own AirPods. So yeah, you could definitely use this as its own dedicated device, especially when you opt for the LT, but I personally don't recommend the LT because I don't find myself using it as much because my phone still is being carried in my pockets. That's just my personal experience. Now Apple did market this Apple Watch to be the toughest glass on any smartwatch. And if we take a closer look at the display, yeah, there's not a lot of scratch marks here and there on the display. But at this point, um, from my experience with my other Apple Watches, I would typically have micro scratches here and there. But this one actually is handling normal wear and tear really well. Now I have exposed this watch to the roughest elements already. Everything from snowboarding to hiking, and yes, the watch itself is water resistant up to 50 meters. That hasn't really changed from the older Apple Watches to the new ones. Now, if you're planning on purchasing an Apple Watch Series 7, at the time making this video, you can find some really good deals, especially on Amazon, like for the blue color, but then some of these other color choices are unavailable. And in addition to that, don't just settle for the standard Apple Watch. There is also the Nike editions which cause exactly the same compared to the standard Apple Watch. Just with the Nike version, you only have two color switches to choose from, the silver and the midnight. So if you're getting one of these two colors on the regular standard Apple Watch, possibly look into the Nike edition because they also have some exclusive watch bands, which is more designed for the athlete in mind. Like these, this one, for example, it just gives you better airflow for your wrist to stay cool. Basically, that's about it. But with the standard Apple Watch, if you go on the Creative Studio, where they actually allow you to customize it, you can actually swap some of these bands out for something else, and they'll actually give you the price difference. So you don't have to pay additional money if you plan on buying these bands out of pocket once you already receive your Apple Watch. So I'll definitely do play around here and design an Apple Watch that you like. If you're settling with the standard one, take advantage of this so you don't end up spending more if you buy a certain band that you like separately. So all in all, the Series 7, yeah, it's the most complete Apple Watch available in the market as it has all the previous features and safety features you expect to find on the older models on the new one. Only key selling point though, however, for the Series 7 that I personally see is just a larger display. So in other words, if you're coming from a Series 6 and you're debating about getting a Series 7, I'll just suggest to hold off because you're not really missing out of, on a lot. Because from a far distance, it still looks like a Series Apple Watch, the newer generation model with like the rounder edges. So if you could wait just a little bit because every year Apple does release a new Apple Watch in the Series 8, it's going to come out alongside with the iPhone like Apple does traditionally every single year. But if you do find a massive killer deal that you can't say no to and the trade-in offer for your Series 6 makes sense, then by all means, the planets have aligned. That's your cue to purchase the Series 7. But in terms of like phone call communications, microphone quality and such, it's phenomenal, like all the other Apple Watches. Apple does an ex excellent job in terms of having the best microphone available on a wearable compared to other smartwatches available in the market. Now, if you're coming from any older Apple Watch, maybe a Series 5, Series 4, especially a Series 3, then yeah, a Series 7 isn't a bad upgrade. But if you don't care so much about the always-on-display hardware, 
I will still heavily consider checking out the SE at least because you may not need all the bells and whistles. You may just be perfectly fine with just the standard like Apple Pay, fall detection, heart rate monitoring for those workout tracking, as well as the altitude meter, which all of these Apple Watches have. Again, I highly recommend considering checking out the SE, which I actually went ahead and covered in 2022. Feel free to watch that video right over there in case you're curious how it's owning a Series SE Apple Watch like in 2022. So there you guys have it. That is a review of the Series 7 Apple Watch in 2022. If you're planning on getting a Series 7 Apple Watch, make sure to check out the links in the video description down below because they will be automatically updated on any sales that's going on on Amazon and such. So keep an eye out in case there's a killer deal in the video description. If you got some really useful information out of this video, you know what to do. Greatly appreciate if you catch leave this video a like as it'll help me out a lot and get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this. If you'd like to watch more, check out this video over here as I highlight all my favorite accessories I'm using in 2022 for the Apple Watch. And then that video over there, that's just a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.